All right. Thank you so much. Beautiful. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's so great to be here with you. Uh, wow, what a crowd. Yeah, she's going to clap. clap. <laughs> Uh, I have never spoken at a Unity Center before, so uh, if I say anything that sounds funny, uh, just say something. <laughs> just holler at me. <laughs> and we'll rewind the uh, tape and get rid of it. <laughs> right. Um, anyway, so uh, it was so awesome to... Where's Chuck? There's Chuck. Hey, Chuck. <laughs> it was so awesome uh, speaking with Chuck when he uh, he and I talked about when I could come out and uh, do the message here. And uh, I picked this date, and I felt super blessed because um, the month of April happens to be about love. What a dink, you know? <laughs> um, I've been experiencing just an amazing love bloom in my life individually and uh, with a special someone that I uh, bumped into. I'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> and uh, just in life in general, like, you know, there's lots of bloomage going on for me. So it's fantastic to be here and to get to share a little bit of that with you. Uh, so I came, I came across a... <laughs> um, a wonderful uh, poem, and you may have heard this one too. I changed it up a little bit though. The subject today is love, and for tomorrow as well. As a matter of fact, I know of no better topic for us to discuss until we all die. That, <laughs> that's a, a poem by Hafez. Have any of you heard of this one? Yeah, it's the subject tonight is love, but we're here during the day. So uh, my topic, you know, was love always finds a way. And so I really got into this topic and I enjoyed my research, uh, my internet research and my readings and, you know, pulling out the poetry and just trying to get into, you know, what is that? What am I trying to say? Love always finds a way. And I kept going to, it's not, it, it's not what I'm thinking of is not referring to the human love, which is beautiful, uh, you know, in terms of romance and relationship, that's a beautiful thing. But the love that always finds a way is what kept coming for me was it's the synonymous with God, you know, or whatever you call it, source energy, truth, um, the, the one power. That's the thing that always finds a way. And what it always finds a way with is for you to be truly happy in your life. For me to be truly happy and for my sweetest most wonderful heart's desires to come true and yours too that's the thing that always finds a way because and i don't want you to get confused with that because uh, what we can do or i know what i can do is if i'm in a relationship and love always finds a way then i can and then if that relationship ends or something happens and it's like well what do i do love always finds a way then i might think i'm supposed to go out and do something about it and on and on into a frenzy. Um, but love always finds a way. So being able for me to come back to the truth of who I am and uh, the love that is within me and that sweetness of love and life, that's what finds a way. And it finds a way for me to be happy, that thing within me. Yes? yes. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with this. Uh, I have experienced the sweet joy uh, recently, uh, reuniting with an amazing man who I dated uh, oh. over 10 years ago. I know, right? It's so cool. Uh, we dated for a while, and then we went our separate ways. Um, I got uh, full on into ministry, and he went on with his life uh, doing other things. That's his sermon. He'll talk about that someday. <laughs> but uh, we reunited, and it was one of those experiences that you read about in a book, you know, or on the internet, <laughs> or Facebook even. You read about it, and, and uh, things like, you know, there's a soulmate connection, or they call it a twin flame connection, where individuals are actually plucked out of their lives as they knew them to be. And, uh, you know, they may have been familiar and comfortable doing their thing the way they were doing it. 
and then suddenly you're catapulted into the unknown, everything changes and it's a little bit scary, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, you meet up with somebody and it seems like it's this chance meeting, but you're actually brought together uh, with this person and then something begins to bloom. So that's what's been happening for me and hopefully for this man too. <laughs> um, and it's what it's absolutely for him too. Uh, and it's wonderful, uh, you know, and what happened for me is it's actually really unexplainable. Um, and you can start to get into your head and wonder what's going on and is this really what it is? And I'm saying it's this, but what, you know, blah, blah, blah. But the beauty is in the sweetness of it, right? And so I keep coming back to that. Uh, and, and I have to keep bringing myself back to that. It's just the sweetness of it, and that's the love. That is really what I desire, is that um, internal relationship with the divine, with God, right? Or with love itself. And then whatever happens on the outside can be solid, or it can change. But the sweetness of it is the sweetness of love that is actually this life, that there's something that is moving with me constantly, uh, making sure that I'm taken care of and, uh, and my heart's desires are being met. And I love that. So I got the deep sense that it's something beyond my own mental capacity and my own personal will that's happening, something that I couldn't have planned or uh, prepared for. Uh, and isn't that how love is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, romantic love. So it's difficult also to put words into because when I start talking about it, I feel like it's cheapening the sweetness of it or something. Do you ever feel mm -hmm. that way? Mm -hmm. uh, but you get the idea of what I'm saying. It's a sweet thing. And that's the sweetness of life, I really believe. It's the sweetness of God, mm -hmm. the sweetness of love, universal love. Um, two souls being brought together by the divine without plan or preparation and continuing to be close together. So when I say that love always finds a way, again, that's what I'm talking about, this invisible presence, the unseen guest that's always there, um, that's always here, this presence of God that will always find a way. So my invitation for you today and uh, something we're going to do in the workshop also is just get present to the sweetness of it and get present to uh, that love and spend time in that love vibration for ourselves and collectively, uh, which is always fun. Um, it's about, you know, affectionate awareness is what I'm calling it. Affectionate awareness, being, uh, becoming aware of that inner kiss of the beloved that is always whispering, here I am, here I am, and I love you, I love you. So when I started writing about this, you know, I got really into the lessons and I started, I, I was getting a download of all this information and I, <coughs> it was like, oh yeah, point one, point two, point three, point three. And, uh, and I was giggling to myself because there was something from my heart that was wanting to come out, right? And I knew that that would have to be what I ended up sharing and talking about which is a beautiful thing, uh, getting vulnerable and sharing that love, you know? Uh, so I realized when Greg was talking that, oh, the, all those points and all that, that's for the workshop. We'll go further into that. Mm -hmm. we're, gonna, um, we're gonna get vulnerable and talk about love stuff and sweetness <laughs> right now. Does that work for you guys? Yeah. All right, yeah. cool. So uh, I wanted to share that um, I went on a silent retreat have any of you spent uh, extended amounts of time in silence? It's beautiful, right? Some of you have. That's wonderful. Uh, so I went on a five-night silent retreat. I was in the middle of my practitioner studies when I did this, and uh, and I was just beginning to really get how loved that I was, and I wasn't afraid. There was a period of time where I might have been afraid to spend five nights entirely in silence, you know? And so it was a beautiful gift to really be present and absolutely know that I am loved and nothing can happen, nothing bad's gonna happen to me if I'm quiet for five days. <laughs> it's gonna be all right, I'm pure love and it's all good. And so uh, 
I went on a silent retreat in Asilomar, and <clears throat> there were about 300 people on this retreat as well, and we had this strict schedule, and uh, I was put into a room with a roommate uh, who I didn't know, and so I met her at the beginning of the retreat, and that was great, and we talked very little, and then we had uh, lunch, I believe, and then they explained, you know, how this was all going to unfold, and what the schedule would be like, which would be something like, you know, you get up and you go to the meditation hall for meditation, and then you have breakfast, and then there's a satsang in the morning, followed by another meditation, and then lunch, and then you've got meditation, break, through the afternoon, so it's like four sessions, 40 minutes of silence, and 30 minutes of break, 40 minutes of silence, 30 minutes of break, and so on. Which is so powerful because you begin to realize, well, what's the difference between being in silence and the break, right? <laughs> it's all silent. Um, anyway, it's a whole, that's, another, that's another month of talks. Um, and so, uh, and then you have dinner, and then another evening satsang, and then silence. So this is the routine for the next four days, you know? I'm like, all right, I got this, you know, it's going to be great. Hey. <laughs> and, uh, and so we go along the routine, and it's cruising along, everything's awesome. Things are happening within me, you know, I'm having, <clears throat> I've had uh, a few really deep uh, realizations and understandings within the silence like this. And, but about the fourth day, I get up early, I go to the meditation hall, and I'm really excited, <laughs> as excited as you could be about me sitting in the silence. <laughs> and I'm early, so I'm, I'm pretty excited, like I made it to the early morning meditation. And uh, another cool thing was um, they only wanted you to sit up front once while you're there. And I thought, oh, I, this is the day that I'm going to sit up in the front for whatever reason. Uh, that had to be the day for me. And uh, I was really looking forward to it. And all of a sudden I had this thought, wow, wouldn't it be so very sweet if I could sit next to my roommate? Like here we have been sharing this space together and uh, I feel like I've really gotten to know her in the silence, which, which is just a sweet and it's a personal space, you know, because silence, you're in silence a lot when you're by yourself and just to share that with another person. <clears throat> you know, I was single at the time, so it just felt very sweet and sacred for me. And that thought came, wouldn't it be sweet to sit next to her today in meditation? That would just be so cool. And then I realized, well, that would have to be something that you plan out, you know, like, and how am I going to plan that with her? Right. can't talk, so <laughs> I just let it go. And then uh, they had this beautiful ritual on the retreat. Um, every time you go into meditation, someone would walk around the building and ring a bell, one of those Buddhist bells, and it was to remind you uh, <coughs> the bell is the sound of home, and so you're coming home and coming home into the silent meditation. So they open the doors after the bell ringing ceremony, and I walk in, and I'm, and I'm looking, you know, I'm gonna go up front, and this is a huge hall, it's Merrill Hall at Silomar. If any of you have been there, you can get an idea of how big this is. And remember, there's 300 people uh, who are gonna be seated in here uh, today. And so I walk in, and it's like, all right, I'm gonna go this way, and, People are fast. They've already got their stuff laid out. They're ready, you know. Um, seats are taken, and and uh, I don't know. I remember like I was going directly, and this was like this is the way I'm going, and I had no idea, but I was moving towards something with a purpose, you know. Uh, like I was being guided to this one particular seat, and there it was, and I got to it, and there was also this ritual of bowing to the chair uh, before you sit down. So you bow to the front as a sign of respect and then bow to the chair before you sit in it as another sign of that respect. So I do this and I'm all situated, got my pillows and my blankets and I'm ready to go. I do the bowing and the bowing and I turn around, I sit down and then I look to my right and who's sitting next to me? Your roommate. Right! What? And what happened in that moment was just that overwhelming <laughs> wash over me of sweetness and pure, uh, the essence of spirit and love 
And then, of course, later, you know, I just felt so wonderful. Like, that is cool. That's so God, right? <laughs> and, you know, later after the retreat, I went home and I was trying to analyze it. Did that, did I manifest that? Or, you know, <laughs> I just so dialed into what's happening that I was guided by intuition. Uh, yeah, all of that. But does that even matter? Uh, no. I really got present to, yeah, it doesn't matter. What matters is the sweetness of it. And that idea dropping into my, my consciousness, right? And, and seeing that happen. It's beautiful. It's like a seed. It's like a bloomage, right? Uh, so I, I just love that. Um, so the point is, it doesn't matter, you know? Get present to the sweetness of life itself. Get present to that sweetness of love um, and wherever that is. And having that opportunity to just give ourselves completely to the moment and be in that moment of sweetness. Otherwise, if we're rushing around, you can't really experience that love and that the pureness of what's happening in the moment, right? Uh, so there's another experience that I, I loved that. That one particular retreat was just life-changing for me, um, and the stories constantly come up. Uh, so I want to share another thing that happened where in a syllabar, uh, they have a lot of caterpillars. And you know the caterpillar is the symbol of transformation. The caterpillar is going to turn into the butterfly. That's not what this story is about. <laughs> the story is about me on one of my breaks from the silent meditation uh, portions of the day. And I went out to um, one of these like the lounge chairs that they have out there. And they have these huge trees. And there are literally so many caterpillars there that they're like falling from the trees and uh, they're crawling all over the place and uh, I mean they're not falling from trees like the rain falls but you know <laughs> they have the potential to fall out of the tree anyway you just see tons of them everywhere and it's like wow there's caterpillars everywhere and I'm in the silence been in the silence for a couple of days you know kind of getting present to life and uh, becoming one with things, right? <laughs> Getting in that, that zone. And then uh, I remember suddenly I'm, as I'm journaling about the caterpillars and how cool it is, uh, one falls to the ground right next to me. And I just had stopped journaling. And I looked at it, and then I was so sad. This caterpillar fell to the ground, and it was like doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, oh my gosh, and then finally it got back up and it crawled away, right? And so it's so funny how these little moments can become so vast. That's what happens, though, when you practice the silence, as Gregory was talking about in his reading, you know? Mm -hmm. You can just take these little moments and expand them out into this timeless, just timeless reality, which, again, is a God thing for me, for sure. Uh, so... Um, Back to the caterpillar. So I'm done journaling. Close my book. I gotta get back to meditation. I don't wanna be late, right? <laughs> and so I get up and then I get this thought that comes to my head that says, Be careful, you'll step on your own head. And and that was a moment, another moment for me, which was just tied into the sweetness of love and God and the realization that I'm one with all of life. And so that's the point of that story. As weird as it sounds, don't step on caterpillars, okay? <laughs> you might step on yourself, right? Anyway, that was just a profound and deep experience for me. Uh, and uh, getting into that sweetness of love and life. Um, <coughs> I don't know when I started. Do I have like five more minutes or ten? We're not sure, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Just keep going until they bring out the hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll know when it's time to wrap it up. So, um, let's see. Uh, it's just a wonderful, it was such a wonderful experience. And I went back and did a couple of more of these silent retreats and had more deepening experiences. And that beauty and love um, really prevailed. Uh, 
So I returned from that first retreat, though, and I was drawing hearts, and I was so into the heart shape, and I started painting, and I did oil painting, and I thought, mm -hmm. I'm going to do these basic color uh, paintings, and I did a bunch of them, and then I'll come back later and do something on top of them. I thought I was doing a background. But what they ended up being was just the backgrounds, right, with some version or variation of the form of the heart. Um, and it was beautiful, and I just had this experience of remembering while I was doing this. It was like remembering who I am, remembering the love that is within me, which became like this mystical union, uh, which is a beautiful thing that Rumi talks about uh, as the inner kiss. And <clears throat> that is one thing that I really want to share with you. It's a beautiful idea that Rumi describes, the inner kiss, and this idea flows from his experience of becoming the beloved himself. And it's about the great unity of his oneness uh, with God. And it is even more because it describes the great passion and deep love of God that is the hallmark of Rumi's work. So I'm inviting you in this moment now to take a moment with me here and consider what would it mean for you to kiss your own soul? What would that mean for you to <coughs> turn your attention inward and kiss your own soul? <clears throat> or how would it feel to experience kissing the presence within your very being? It's a profoundly uh, sweet idea of mystical wholeness. And the Sufis say that the clearest connection to God is inside the heart. Moving more and more within, more and more into that love center. And as we do that, those feelings of separation end up dissolving into a sublime wholeness. And right before that dissolution is complete, the inner kiss occurs. So each time we go within and have that experience and let uh, the outside um, illusions uh, and feelings of separation to dissolve, that inner kiss continues to occur. And that's what really deepens our love and our love connection to ourselves and with the whole world, right? So that's the trick. If you're wondering how to uh, manifest in your life the ideal mate or the ideal love romance or how to improve the love in your life, it's an inside job. You have to improve the love that you have within your self, your self-love, and allow that self-love bloomage to occur so that you can have that love and share that love with the rest of the world, with those in your immediate world, uh, with those in your community, etc. So I'm uh, going to invite you now to uh, just close your eyes again and if you will, just softly whisper these words, I love you. I love you. You're softly whispering these words to yourself and to everyone in this room. I love you. A little bit louder though, I want to hear it. I love you. 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 Beautiful. Uh, just saying that and hearing that changes, it changed me just in that moment. It altered and shifted something in me. And in this room, I don't know if you all can feel that too. It's beautiful. So uh, uh, back to the uh, romance and the, the human relationship. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up with that. I read, uh, I love Facebook. Sometimes I can, do you guys like face? Some of you do. Yeah. You can get, who is the person in here that get, that's uh, 99? Is that? No, she's not here. <laughs> oh, she's not here. She's <laughs> on Facebook. I thought that was so cute. <laughs> um, you get stories and people share from the heart on there. You know, if you're lucky, you can you'd be dialed into the, to the really sweet and great love things and not all the chaos and drama <laughs> that people get wrapped up in. Anyway. Somebody wrote a beautiful thing that 
I love. And he said, not a day goes by that I don't give thanks for how I was blessed by love. I got the lucky ticket. And he's talking about the person in his life. But she is demanding and ruthless, highly sensitive and on purpose. No funny games, no tricks, and nothing phony. Only the real deal is allowed. He says, I'm a servant of that. It's an authentic path where we both came out of hiding and stayed out. And the love deepens and widens and takes in the whole world. And all it takes is the willingness to die into it. So let's let the fear and illusions burn and walk into that fire together. So the kind of love that I want to experience in my life is that in the external world, right? So I've got the internal love, that inner kiss, uh, and then there's the love with your beloved uh, partner, uh, lover, uh, significant other, you know? And for me, it's like, let's just go for it, man. Let's just go for it and <laughs> let those fears and uh, whatever the illusions are, the past, the future, just let it burn and step into that fire that's love and pure wholeness and divinity. Let's just do it. So let's pray. So with that, we just turn our attention inward, returning to that beautiful, beloved sanctuary within, that space of wholeness and perfection, that space of love. <sighs> and in that space of love, I know that I am always guided and directed by love, that each individual here is guided and directed by this love. And all that we need to do is to lay back in those arms of love and know that just like the ocean and the wave of the ocean is, uh, is powered, a wave is powered by the ocean and it's powered by this great surge and this great force that moves it into being the wave that something has uh, created us individually here and now for such a time as this. And we allow that force, like is the ocean that is the force of the universe, the life itself, propelling us into form right here and now as beloved children of God. Imagine yourself to be the sweetheart of the universe, because that's what you are. You are God in form. And just as a wave in the ocean becomes a formation powered by the ocean, I know that we are powered by this invisible presence and in all that we think and say and do, and that we are very blessed because of it. So I know and give thanks for the love that is present in my heart, for the love that is present in each individual here, for this center, for inspired living in Unity Center for Inspired Living of Brentwood, knowing that as we go forth from here, our days are blessed and we see love. And remember that we, each of us, are the sweetheart of the universe. And as we remember that in all that we do throughout the rest of this day and the week that comes uh, ahead, that life is good and all is well. Mm -hmm. And I give thanks for that and release this now to that loving, immutable action of the law that is beautiful and sweet and always says yes. And I invite you to help me anchor this truth by saying with me, and so it is. And so it is. Amen.